Hello, I'm Bernie Hayes. Today's guest is all about the Grio, all about Alice Wyndham, all about the Wyndhams today on the Bernie Hayes Show. Welcome back. My guest is the creator of the Griot Museum of Black History, Lois Conley. Lois, welcome. Thank you very so much. So good to see you. Good to be back. And a project that you're doing involves somebody very, very close to me, Jack Wyndham. We'll be talking about his sister, Alice Wyndham. Jack, welcome. Thank you. So good to see good you again. Good to see you, too. Good to see you. <laughs> no, no, where's John? But somebody's John, missing, right? John had an appointment this morning. Yeah, an appointment this morning. Missing. But he's okay. always present in me. He's here. Always there. <laughs> always. Always in me, too, actually. Lois, uh, tell us about what's going on at the Griot Museum. Tell us what is the Griot Museum and what's about. Well, the Griot Museum is, um, wow, almost 30 years old now. We've been at 2505 St. Louis Avenue since 1997. So we've been there in the city, uh, basically trying to make sure that our stories get told. That they become a, a regular part of the stories that that talk where people talk about St. Louis and talk about history. That the stories of African Americans are absolutely included in those stories. Yeah. So we've been that's what we do. We tell those stories in our own way, but we try to make sure we're telling stories that maybe people don't know about, or mm -hmm. people haven't heard about it, or and it's an opportunity for them to uh, for us to pique their interest in learning a bit more. Okay. Now you, the name Grio. Museum of African American History is new. The force it was what? It's it's about well, it's about ten years old. We started mm -hmm. out with another name, which really wasn't very, um, I'd say, perfect for us. This mm -hmm. one is more perfect in in yeah. terms of what we do. Sure, uh, it's an African term that means storyteller. Right, uh, and so that's that's really what we do. We tell stories. We collect the information that we needed from our, that's needed from our community to talk about the people and events that are important to our uh, black, black. well, actually, I, we call it black history, but it's, it's everybody's history. Yeah. It's, it's special because of the, you know, the trauma and the, the way that we have evolved. But it's history that without our part, our part in it, there wouldn't be any history. We've uh, visited there many times, and mm -hmm. we've shown some of the wax figures that you have. Mm -hmm. any, anything new? Anyone Nothing new recent, mm -hmm. recently, uh, but we're planning some. We're actually planning a large expansion. Mm -hmm. So in the next few years or so, you'll begin to see an evolution of some plans that we've been making and trying to find funding for and developing over the past year, a couple years, actually. Now. Sure. You've been very busy, I see. Been very busy. Oh, and recently I saw Channel 4 on yes. CBS give you the, uh, the, the surprise The surprise award. squad, <laughs> absolutely. I mean, and it was a total surprise. I don't know how they did it and kept it from me for over a month and nothing leaked out. But it was uh, it was quite rewarding. I felt good about it. And your beautiful daughter, where is she? She is doing well. She's in Atlanta uh, working for the Fulton County School District there, doing mm -hmm. well and enjoying it. That's great. And I guess this, who's this, who's this gentleman here? This is my new brother. Okay. Jackson Wyndham. Um, actually, we became closer after um, we lost our sister Alice Wyndham. Mm -hmm. um, and they bequeathed the household collection of Alice Wyndham to the Griot. Wow. And it's an amazing, amazing collection. Jack Wyndham, how have you been? Been doing well. You're looking good. Well, thank you. You look good yourself. <laughs> thank you. Yeah. Tell us what, what your role is in this uh, the tribute to Alice. Well, let me just say at the outset that this is community treasure and a gift to the Wyndham brothers. I know. Uh, Alice and Lois went way back. Well, they had a relationship. Sure. But when Alice passed and uh, left everything for us to take care of in the way of her estate, mm -hmm. John and I had one thing in mind. Get stuff to the dumpster, <laughs> wow. get it out, yeah. and uh, it was a blessing that she came into the mix. Yeah. And we said, "Well, come on in." We had no idea of what we had, yeah. and that she treasure. did. Uh, we're talking nine rooms and a basement filled with over three thousand books and oh. just a vast documents. Uh, and she came in and she approached it gingerly. <laughs> let me touch it. Yeah. Let me see it. Let me. She is a curator. She's been, 
she is a curator, right. mm -hmm. and the idea of us dealing with history, historical documents, we just didn't know. So she is salvation, and we adopted her. Right. She's full. We have a sister. Yeah. Jack Wyndham, tell us who was Alice Wyndham. Alice, uh, let me just say this. Alice, Alice was just a normal person. Mm. She's not a superhero. Uh, she was to me. She was to many of us. And, yeah. and to many, yeah. she became. Uh, but it's amazing. I've learned more about her after her death and dealing with her vast library yeah. than I ever knew. Alice uh, grew up on Prairie View's campus, down at Prairie View. Uh, Alice was a precocious reader, uh, but she loves activities, sports. She's a very good athlete, and that uh, she did the kinds of things little girls do. We moved to St. Louis in 1948, and when we came here, uh, went to Cope Brilliant School. She went on from there to Sumner. Uh, but she was in shock when she came to St. Louis yeah. because we lived on a campus where we thought black people ran everything. We had no idea that white people had anything to do. Yeah. We were in Texas. Yeah. Uh, but we got to St. Louis and we got a shock. And the shock was that black kids and white kids didn't go to the same school. That only on Brotherhood Day did blacks go to the theaters that whites went to. And we couldn't sit down and eat at places. Alice became a voracious reader of black history. And she had seen my mother in action uh, as an activist in the city. Mm -hmm. yes, she, she was. was. And she was aware of my dad's <laughs> activism. Uh, and she internalized it in a way that by the time she was a senior in high school, Alice joined CORE, Congress of Racial Equality, yeah. and uh, did protest at Catch Drugs, did protest at Jefferson Bank. Uh, she was far more of an activist than my mom and dad wanted her to be. Yeah. But she had internalized it in a way that she could do something and that she was going to do something. And so it... Uh, it seemed to become her calling in life. So after leaving Sumner, going to Central State, uh, when she was at Central State, she organized a public accommodations protest there in Xenia, Ohio, and led that protest. Wow. Uh, from there, went on to the University of Chicago, got her graduate degree in social work and community organizing there in Chicago. So her involvement was always about black people. She was immersed in the idea that she wasn't on a cruise with the captain navigating the ship, yeah. mm -hmm. that she felt that she could do something and would act. And so she prepared herself to be a person totally committed to black liberation, black freedom, and justice. Mm -hmm. Then she gave her life to it. As her two brothers did. It, in, in our own way. Yeah, sure. it, uh, Alice Taylor had an interesting view of history. Alice didn't have a static view of history. When I say a static view, uh, I think of, uh, come see this. See the first, remember the Pittsburgh Courier used to have a little series, First Black to Do This. Yeah. When you got the Courier, you looked at it, yeah. see who was the first black to do something. Yeah. But Alice was, Alice was not really interested in the first black to do much of anything. What she was interested in, because she saw history, not static, but in a dynamic way, was to get involved in the stream of history and be about the business of shaping history. So she saw history as a continuum of struggle, and she saw it in a dynamic way. And so her sense was, you got to prepare yourself to be involved in this, not only being willing to go to the street, but you've got to prepare yourself intellectually so that you can be in the public square and engage in rigorous debate if necessary. Yeah. Uh, and she was prepared. And she was, she was very well, well prepared. prepared. And uh, she had to be very much aware that she was a female all of the time. Yeah. Because in that day, females just didn't put themselves out in front, in front of men. 
Uh, so she had to play that card as she saw uh, the need to play it. Now let's take a short break here. With the New Life Evangelist Center, 2428 Woodson Road in Overland, Missouri, Reverend Larry Rice has been preparing and serving people in need for more than 52 years. Back with our guests after this. The Bernie Hayes Program is uh, produced at NLEC TV uh, right here at 2428 Woodson Road in Overland, Missouri. It's our new headquarters since they closed the 1411 Locust Building. We're working to get back into that building. In addition to that, trying to help so many people through a wide variety of safe houses, training programs, transportation assistance, so many ways people are getting help because of all of you that are supporting the work of New Life Evangelistic Center. Now, if you'll send a gift of $25 or more, we want to send you this special, the Bernie Hayes Show Cup. And we're giving that to people. It's just a way of saying thank you. So when you send your gift, request a cup. We'll be happy to get it off to you. It's New Life Evangelistic Center, P.O. Box 473, St. Louis, Missouri. That's 63166. You can give online at nlecstl.org. Now I'm really asking all of you to join us in praying. The needs are so phenomenal at this particular time. So many hurting and homeless people are contacting us daily, but we're able to help them because of each one of you that are praying, caring, and sharing at this time. Tell your families and friends about NLEC TV and get directly involved yourself. Transportation assistance is so vital for hurting people on the streets. You can help provide bus tickets by walking so the homeless can ride. When we walk ar around Creevecourt Memorial Lake, we need sponsors who will uh, give money to New Life, give that gift so that homeless men and women can ride. This is such an important service that we need your help with. We are going to be meeting at the Tremaine Shelter at 13725 Marine Avenue in Maryland Heights, Missouri. You can register for this event by going to nlecstl.org forward slash events. When you register for this event today, you can know that you are really ministering to so many people who are hurting and hopeless and in despair. These bus tickets are life-saving to so many. Please help us today. Go online and register. Welcome back. My guest is Alice Wyndham's creators and, and you know, they say stakeholders here in uh, St. Louis, Missouri. Uh, Jack Wyndham, Alice Wyndham's brother, and Lois Conley, the creator and creator of the Greer Museum National History, Black History in St. Louis, Missouri. Uh, there's so many things going on. I may get mixed up because uh, there's so many things I want to ask about. Mm -hmm. um, Lois Conley, tell us about the current project about Alice. Well, as Jack was talking earlier mm -hmm. about her being such a scholar and being mm -hmm. prepared, you know, she didn't just, just learn about African American history. She went all the way back to Egypt. No, sure. she was. She was when he said prepared, she was prepared and she could that continuum of history, she was well versed in it. Uh, she could even write glyphs and read Egyptian like you know, she just if she if she was if it was there, she was going to be deeply immersed in it. She was nothing tangential about what she did. Mm -hmm. And so that's what you see in this collection of hers. Everything that she ever used to prepare herself, we have something of it. Uh, and probably uh -huh. multiple copies, uh -huh. uh, including books and journals, handwritten letters, and correspondence with people um, that she began shortly after, well, a, well, actually in high school, yeah. and up until probably a year or so, or the year during which she passed, she was still very active with those uh, people she had, with whom she'd made relations, connections over the years. So that's what the, that is the beauty of her collection, is mm -hmm. that it is well documented, the house could have just become a library. Sure. Uh, it has so much uh, information in it um, that my brothers didn't throw away before I got there. Uh, <laughs> we were on a mission. <laughs> they were on a mission. And, uh, but they, as soon as we started to talk, they, they, they clearly understood that, you know, they understood more what the possibilities of having that collection safe and mm -hmm. meant for our community. Um, and as, as he said, he's learning more about her going through this process now as we uncover things and we read things and we go through documents uh, that he then more than he ever knew. And so that's what I'm hoping will happen with our community, mm -hmm. that this will be, eventually will become a professional archived space where people can come in and do research. Um, there's books there from um, 
um, Ben Yakaman and all of the, the noted scholars are there, and many of them were original copies. Um, so people who are, are doing serious African American studies and, and research in that area will be able to come to the GRIO and find some information there. Wow. It's well documented. She even has cryptic little anecdotes in, in some of the um, materials that in that could be a collection in and of, in and of itself. Um, and then just the way that she um, the, just very meticulously documented things and notes, notations. Um, it's just an amazing collection. You really have to see it. So our, pro our, our project now, we're on a mission to, this was a surprise uh, donation. We didn't expect to get this. And actually, obviously, we didn't have any budget and space and everything else. So we're, we've are we been, for the last year, um, you know, trying to make sure make sure that we get what is available to, to get in a place, in a safe place. Sure. Uh, and, you know, it's going to require some funding and some support for that. So we're going to start a Alice Wyndham initiative starting with a kickoff on uh, March 30th. I'll let uh, Usman talk about that in a little bit. But it's designed, one, to let people know about the collection and that we have the, some of the items that we have and that in the long term they will be available and accessible to the public. We're fortunate that uh, there's, you know, many of her things are original and some of them are deteriorating. And so it's, it's kind of crucial and urgent that some of those get attention. Um, more, well, a lot sooner than later. So we're really happy also that there is a, an, an initiative uh, with the Smithsonian, the African American Museum in, D, in DC. They're, mm -hmm. they're digitizing some at-risk um, oh, objects, sure. and we're, we're fortunate to be one of those institutions they're gonna work with. Uh, so they'll be coming in in September to help us digitize some of those really fragile, uh, particularly um, media mm -hmm. items. Um, so we're happy about that. So are there little pieces that will be happening? This is a long-term project. Yeah. It's not going to be complete in a year, probably not even in five, because it's, it's just a massive uh, amount of uh, work to be done. So we're, we're trying to gear up to be in a position to really handle that uh, collection in a professional way. Okay. Um, I've never met Alice that I didn't learn something. Absolutely. Every time I was Absolutely. with her, I mean, I mean, over 50 years, you know, uh, yes. I learned something each time I was with her. One thing she was very proud of was her relationship with Malcolm X, mm -hmm. El Haas, Malik El Shabazz. And uh, this photograph of uh, Malcolm X uh, is one that she was very, very proud of and she displayed yeah. with, with pride and honor. Uh, Jack, tell us about this photograph. Well, I don't have a lot of information about it mm -hmm. except that uh, Alice was uh, moved to Africa mm -hmm. and became an expatriate. And uh, while she was there, she became the point person for Malcolm X's visit to Africa. Uh, in that setting, of course, Alice was in an intellectual circle with uh, W.B. Du Bois. Du Bois. Mm -hmm. And uh, his, Maya Angelou was very, very close, close right. friend of hers. They were roommates. Yeah, yeah, they were roommates. They were very college, close yeah. friends. Mm -hmm. and, it, uh, and, and when Malcolm came over, and Alice had a chance to get to know him well. He was, they just became very close. Sure. And she saw him sitting and uh, captured that photo. Alice had a photo. She was a photo bug yeah. from childhood. Mm -hmm. So she knew a good picture when she saw a good picture. Uh, and so that's a picture that's been well circulated. Uh, it's, it's a very pensive pose of Malcolm. And it... And it and it really helps focus on her connection to the struggle because he was dynamic in the struggle on this side. Sure. And she was dynamic in the struggle on both sides. Uh, they were both two committed people. Uh, Alice was a person who, as she looked at what was happening in Africa and became involved, she said she was never so fulfilled it's her chance to be an active player in so many important things in Africa. Wow. And when she got back, the Pan Am movement was in her heart, Pan American, Pan African sure. movement. Mm -hmm. And it, uh, so she stayed involved with that piece, did original research on the black presence in the Western Hemisphere. The whole diaspora. Uh, before the, the trans, diaspora. yes, she, the whole diaspora was yeah, her, sure. was her, and she traveled to it. Mm -hmm. What is interesting about this picture, Bernie, it, it, um, is because of her great organizational skills and attention to detail, Alice became the person who was actually responsible for arranging the whole trip. 
she did all the communications wow. and all of the logistical work that was necessary to get in there and to get him around uh, Ghana while he was there. So they, again, she just she just was just a phenomenal person in terms of one not only her knowledge but her ability to get things done. And she was so w very well trust so highly trusted and respected that they, they gave her that responsibility. I need to know how to reach you. Uh, not only to have the Griot Museum, but also to help this uh, ex 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 exhibition sure. exhibit that's going to become sure. very soon. How can we reach you and, and donate? The to Griot you? Museum is at 2505 St. Louis Avenue. You can reach us by calling 314-241-7057. That'll get us direct, get you directly into the museum. Or you can you can also re go to our website, and there'll be some information about the Griot and this project at thegriotmuseum.com. But we'd like to invite everybody to come out to this launch event on March 30th uh, at the museum from mm -hmm. 2 to 4 p.m. and hopefully bring a little donation that yeah. can help get this initiative well on the way. We've started that collection, so we'd like to have the community help us as well. Okay. And then we're talking about uh, Alice Wyndham and the collection that's going to be displayed at the Greer Museum very, very soon. With the Life Evangelist Center, 24, 28 Woodson Road, over in Missouri, back after this. Is anxiety becoming more and more a part of your daily living? Is it sucked all the joy out of you to worry begins to dominate your life? Then I want to encourage you to take the nature prescription that is given in Matthew chapter 6, verses 25 through 34. Experience the peace that passes all understanding as you move into the beauty of creation, meditating on the God who's created all this, letting His Word unfold in your life. When He says not to be anxious, don't be anxious. But consider the lilies. They don't go out here and toil and spin, and yet look at them in all their beauty, the flowers. Look at the birds. They don't worry about what they're going to reap and sow, and yet your Heavenly Father takes care of them. He'll also take care of you. But put first the kingdom of God. Jesus Christ, through His death and resurrection, made that possible. Commit your life to Jesus right now. Call upon Him in this day of trouble. He will deliver you, and you will experience His peace that passes all understanding, giving you the ability to stop worrying. On February the 21st, 1965, revolutionary black nationalist Malcolm X was assassinated while making a speech at the Audubon Ballroom in New York. He was only 39 years old, and to this day, it is still widely believed throughout the progressive sectors that the U.S. government was very much behind his death. This new book, Malcolm X by Jack Rummel, is an illustrated edition that does a remarkable job of defining Malcolm X's childhood, his ambition, and his rise to political figures. Malcolm X, Militant Black Leader is the name of it, it presents the life of Malcolm X, a radical revolutionary in the 1960s, known for attacking American racial attitudes and advocating a separate society for blacks. Of course, the best book on Malcolm X, his life is the autobiography of Malcolm X by Alex Haley, and this is a great alternative for the younger readers who may benefit from the great photographs and simplified writing in this book. I really like this book. All you need to know about Malcolm X is covered in this new book by Malcolm X. God loves a cheerful giver. Even though things are really tough right now, you can make a difference in the lives of so many. New Life has been doing this work for 50 years, and we have seen God's gracious goodness through people like you who have participated in this work. There are so many people who are suffering. More people are, are becoming homeless for the first time. Uh, with the rising pro costs of uh, inflation and food and housing and so many other commodities, we need help. You can make a difference today in the lives of so many. By giving your tax-deductible gift to P.O. Box 473, St. Louis, Missouri, or go to newlifeevangelisticcenter.org, or call to get involved in this incredible work. Welcome back. I am Bernie Hayes. My guest is Lois Connolly from the Griot Museum of African American History. And uh, Ms. Connolly, you have a guest with us. I do. I Another have guest. Usman Gay, who's been with the Griot Museum now for just about a year, just a little over a year, mm -hmm. actually. And he's our community engagement person at the museum and helps us out a lot with community events. And he's helping us, Jack and uh, John, and a small group of people helping us plan this Alice Wyndham initiative. So I'll let him talk about that. Yeah, wonderful. Osman, welcome. Yeah, thank you for having me. Finally, seeing you in person. We're talking <laughs> on the phone all the time. It's so yeah. good to see you. Yeah, yeah put name to face. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, 
and the Hanks Pipes also was uh, ah, yes. promoting uh, you very well in the Grail Museum in oh, the Sat in the South was in Prada. So tell us about what's going on. Yeah, so I've been at the Grio just over a year. I started last February, mm -hmm. um, and it's really been a treat, I think, to be in an institution that I think is so integral to the history of St. Louis. Um, I think Ms. Conley does a really good job as well of not only just focusing on what we might know about certain figures, um, we have definitely some more known figures such as mm -hmm. Josephine Baker and Miles Davis, um, but I think really delving deep into why they are so significant as well. And so it's been an honor to get to learn about Miss Wyndham and her life and her legacy. Um, obviously, some of the folks that she was really close to, like Malcolm X, Maya Angelou, the Du Bois family, um, those are folks that we learn about in the history classrooms. Um, but I think Miss Wyndham is just as integral to those histories. Um, and I hope through my work and community engagement, I'm able to sort of sing the praises of Miss Wyndham and her work. Um, it's also been a treat to work with Dana, who's our archivist at the museum. Mm -hmm. And so she's done a lot of that work as well, um, sort of cataloging and helping to put things sort of, I think, in a chronological order, or at least by themes and things like that, to better, I think, sort of flesh out the parts of her story that um, are definitely significant. I think that people, once they know about Miss Wyndham, they'll ask how they didn't know about her before. How did you feel being immersed in this wonderful history of, in the city of St. Louis and, and meeting so many people? You're from WashU, right? Yeah, so I grew up in Atlanta, mm -hmm. um, in Lithonia, Georgia, and then I came out here for my undergrad years. Mm -hmm. um, and so I started this fellowship really kind of in earnest, wanting to learn more about the city that I've um, began to call home over the last few years. Mm -hmm. um, and obviously, I think St. Louis has a very interesting history as it relates to black history in particular. Um, and so no better place to delve into that history than at the Griot Museum. And so I think it's really uncovered, I think, a lot of layers, um, not just uh, from the black history, but even just even where the Griot is situated itself, um, mm -hmm. especially in North St. Louis, I think um, there's definitely some connotations and I think some misconceptions of North St. Louis, but the more you peel back the layers, you realize that that history is just as storied and just as integral to the city as a whole. Um, and so I think it really has instilled a sense of pride in me and the well, city and, and sort of the culture that abounds in the city. How can we reach you? Um, so I'm always at the museum when we're open Tuesdays through Saturdays. Um, and then you can always call the museum at 314-241-7057, or you can reach me at my email. Um, my first name, Usman, O-U-S-M-A-N-E, dot museum at mm -hmm. gmail.com. Great. You know, um, I'm, I'm trying to find out how you personally felt by being among such dignitaries as Lois Connolly, Jack and John Wyndham, and then knowing their histories. Uh, what did it make you feel? Did you feel like you were blessed, more or less? <laughs> no, for sure blessed. Um, it's funny you say dignitaries, because I think they are really bastions of knowledge. Yeah. Uh, but I think in that same vein, there's uh, a humbleness as well, in terms of wanting to share that knowledge. Um, and I think they might not always see themselves in that way. Um, and so it's always kind of just, I'm a, definitely a person that likes to sit and sort of take in things um, before raising my hand just because I want to understand before I really start to jump into something. Um, and so it was, I think, especially those first few months working with Miss Lois of just like, what is going on here? Because yeah. I really like, there's such a rich history and you've been doing this for basically three decades, if not longer. Yeah. Um, and We're so- really minute left. Uh, just really wanting to know what, uh, how I could help contribute to the larger legacy and history of the Griot. Well, again, once again, tell us how we can reach uh, the Griot, Ms. Connie. Well, well, especially come out and join us on the 30th and, and bring a check, if you will. <laughs> but you can reach us at 314-241-7057. And we're there Tuesday through Saturdays from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. If you just want to come by and visit. We love to have visitors, uh, and that's why we're there. So please do come by and visit us. We'd like to see you. Lois Connolly, it's always a pleasure seeing you. Usman Gay, thank, thank you very much for being with us. Me. And then Jack Wyndham, thank you, Jack. Tell John Wyndham I said hello to, well, please. Yeah. And each one of you, thank you very much for your support of the Life Advancement Center and the Bernie Hayes Show. Bernie Hayes, have a great day. See you next time. <laughs>